Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. Now, this is a sequel to the 2014 Turtles movie, and I found it an energetic improvement. The last one had them as characters in someone else's story, and here they make the good decision to make it about the Turtles from the Turtles' point of view, and anyone else is supporting cast. Now, you could play the two movies back-to-back and be convinced that they were shot at the same time. By and large, it is the same visual experience, though I'd say the 3D is, uh, at times, a bit more pushed out on this one. Uh, Just to take a quick peek at the former movie here, and notice the 3D is very good, but in this one, they just push it out just that little bit extra uh, much of the time. However, uh, there's also a lot more to see here. Now, uh, 3D is best when it's given something to do, and here it just has a lot more colorful enemies, uh, a bigger clubhouse, not to mention the turtle mobile. And also, there's several moments where they take us up into the sky um, and actually have a, a massive enemy ship form in the sky. And I like that when we do that, go to the sky, we get an expanded stereo point of view, uh, whether the attention is looking up or down from the sky. Uh, other conversions, uh, such as Pacific Rim, as an example, will purposely have big things nearly flat. Uh, The idea is that we as humans don't see big things in stereo normally, so it supposedly diminishes the illusion that something is big. Now, although I'd agree that 3D does create a dollhouse effect uh, where things seem like toys, uh, I would argue that we as viewers accept the effect uh, as our playground, as the stage, and the brain adjusts and plays along with the story. Now, speaking of brains, I love the CGI of uh, this brain guy. His name is Krang. And despite being a major antagonist in turtle lore, this is the first movie to use him. And I I just felt they absolutely just nailed the look of him. (laughs) He's just ever so slightly gross, uh, which is, uh, well, it's perfect for a kid's TV show. This is, I found it perhaps a perfect live-action version of the kid's TV show. It wastes little time and just jumps into the action. Normally, 3D doesn't like it fast. Uh, The eye needs time to uh, absorb stereo. But here, a lot of what we see is fast action, but not necessarily fast editing. So although it feels frantic, uh, you still, your eye has plenty of time to enjoy the stereo. Though the experience of the movie does call to mind uh, something I once heard about Sesame Street. You see, when Sesame Street was being developed, they would do test screenings with young kids. And whenever the kids would look away from the screen, uh, they'd make an edit or cut to something else at that moment. And this movie has the feeling of being put together much the same way. There's rarely a moment where you're tempted to look away. Uh, It's always got something new and exciting for you to look at. Now, sometimes, mm, like with Chicken Little, if you throw too much at you, uh, uh, sometimes when it doesn't work, it doesn't it really doesn't work, and it can come off as just being unfocused and and tough to get into. But here, it all felt like pieces of a puzzle, just all falling nicely together. (laughs) When I was a kid, I went to a car show that advertised an appearance by the Turtles. Now, the advertisement used a photo from uh, that late 80s, or was it early 90s, live-action movie. But When we got to the show, what we actually got was just somebody in a plush green floppy Halloween costume. (laughs) Oh well, at least they had a couple of the Batmobiles. 
Actually, as I recall, uh, David Hasselhoff was there too. Um, I remember walking down a corridor, corridor, and from a curtain divider above me, his head popped out like a cuckoo clock, and he did a quick crowd scan, then disappeared like a turtle from his shell. <laughs> uh, why do kids like turtles? Now, I suppose if you to really look at a turtle, um, a turtle kind of looks like a young kid. It's round and it's baby-faced. It's slow and crawls as if it's perpetually learning to walk. And like a kid, it's defenseless too. If danger is faced, the only option is to pull into its shell. Much like a kid would do, albeit uh, the shell would just be an imaginary one in his head, but um, the, uh, the imagined experience would be the same. Now, a kid might relate to a turtle, but he dreams of, uh, of having power. Kids live in absolutely powerless worlds, and, um, and the idea of being in control is, um, uh, is a fantasy, frankly. Um, and of being a ninja living in a decked-out playpen with his friends. <laughs> uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is very much a perfect childhood fantasy. And actually, if you uh, continue with the analogy, I wonder if Krang might be something like a school principal and Shredder, uh, the other bad guy, uh, the teacher. <laughs> and then we have Bebop and Rocksteady, the uh, mutant pig and mutant uh, rhinoceros. Uh, I know they might be the school bullies or maybe antagonistic siblings. A wish fulfillment fantasy. But in a way, all movies are that wish fulfillment, uh, even if they hide it through sophistication and big ideas. Uh, a child imagines himself a man to protect his childhood. A man imagines himself a god to protect his family. You can see, actually, here the turtles are also living out the same fantasy. Uh, it's in the masks. They wear them not to conceal any identity, but to create one. 